What's up people, welcome back to Two That Move. Today is finally a sunny day so we can actually fix the leak on the van. I tried to fix it the other day uh, and as you can see from this footage, it didn't go too well. And it's obviously just started raining. Wasn't forecast to rain, but it is raining. But we did film that sick little intro so I hope you enjoyed that. Strap in because it's gonna be a banger. But yeah, look at the weather outside. We can finally fix the leak. I need to, wait. Hey babe. Hey babe. Do I put it in there with the bag or do I put them in loose? Uh, put them in loose, I think. But before we get on fixing the leak in the van, we've got to empty it first and it is full of crap. <laughs> we got rid of some of it, but there's still loads of shit in there. Meldy shit. Meldy. <laughs> it's meldy. It's actually time to try and fix this leak now. As you already saw in the footage before, it's pretty mashed. I think we might end up with a very big hole in the roof of the van. <laughs> Tie your hair back, kids. This here is what's rusted. I can't get the solar panels off, so I hope it doesn't go too far under there. I'm gonna have to cut it here, I think, and around like this. And then this seam, you can see, is screwed. Like any job, it's gonna be harder and more difficult than you thought it was gonna be, but it's kind of essential. So the lovely Rihanna just brought me out a little bit of munch. And I think I've worked out how we're gonna fix it. Fill it with sealant, basically, and put some tape over it. It's only got to last a couple years, so here's what it is, really, and this is the only thing that's holding me back from the rest of the thing. Okay, so we've managed to actually now get the hole to fairly square, fairly clean. And now, yeah, I'm gonna get a hot gun, dry it out so it's not still wet in there, and then, uh, yeah, cake it full of sealant. I'm not saying hi, I'm saying bye. Why don't you come say hi? Bye. Where are you going, baby? I'm walking. Aw. I'm going there. Can you bring me more slices, please? No, there was only one, darling. Aw. Do you need Pringles? I have Pringles in a minute. Pringles? Pringles? <laughs> Cut to me giving you Pringles? <laughs> I'm going there. Up there? Because I could wave at you. Uh. No. Behind that. Bye, have fun. Bye. Before I fill it with sealant, oh, I've got this cure rust stuff. It basically turns rust into not rust. So I'm gonna brush a bit of this on, leave it for half an hour. And during that half an hour, there's loads of other places in the van that could end up like this one that I'm gonna stick this fat waterproof tape on. You can already see that this one is gonna rust through. So. We're gonna stick this fat old tape on it. Just slap it on there. Pretty proud of this little bit of genius. Got an old uh, paint roller. Gonna roll that on nice and hard. That's that one taped, and then there was another bit there that I did. Whoa. It smells like salt vinegar crisps. I actually can't describe to you how much that it stinks of salt vinegar crisps. So weird. I should probably stop sniffing it to be fair. I can't wait to get this stupid hat off. That is the job so far. Um, hopefully that is gonna seal it up pretty good. I'm gonna go over it with the tape tomorrow, which you'll see, but I'm gonna get all these tools away. Uh, fast forward to tomorrow. It is a tomorrow now. But first, we've got to move the van back into position. So not ideal, it's actually obviously been raining overnight and I've got a puddle where the leak was. So the chances are it's probably still effing leaking. This is not how I envisioned fixing this leak to go. <laughs> not ideal. It does seem to have gone off fairly well, but I think I'm just gonna dry it out with a heat gun and slap the tape on it anyway. Oh my God, it's legit just started raining again. Yep, so now this day is completely miserable. 
Right then. Working outside on the van has been rained off. God knows if that leak is gonna hold. It's kind of a bodge job, isn't it? <laughs> but in the meantime, I wanna talk about the most important part of any van build, and that is planning. Now there's loads of great videos out there on this already, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but I do wanna touch on it because it is pretty crucial if you want your van build to run smoothly, which is stupid because it won't run smoothly, but you know, at least you can try and plan and you get it. Right, let's jump straight into this. The aim of planning is to build up a picture of what our completed van is gonna look like. Now, converting a van is too big a job to do off the top of your head, so let's start by making a list of all the features and components that you want to include. Now remember the space is very small, so the more features you cram in, the more cramped it's gonna feel once it's finished. So you've got your kitchen, which is limited by how much gas and electricity you have available. And then there's whether you want a fixed bed or one that packs away. The choice of bed that you have is probably gonna have the biggest impact on the amount of space you have left in your van. Then you need to dedicate storage space for all your pots and pans and bikes and boards and skis and clothes and whatever the hell else you want with you. Now, not everyone has a shower, but I at least recommend that you have space for a toilet in there somewhere. So once you've listed down all the features, you also need to list down the important gubbins like batteries and gas bottles and, and water tanks because all that needs somewhere to go as well. I really recommend taking time on this list as adding things in later is possible, but it's never easy and you always have to muck around taking things apart to do so. Now the boring bit is out of the way, draw out an empty box that is roughly the same shape as the living area of your van. Then start filling it out with all the main components from your list of essentials. Our plan includes a fixed bed at the back of the van with loads of storage underneath for all our stuff. A central wet room, which is also where we'll be storing our porta potty. So our kitchen's not that big, it's only gonna run up the one side, but we're gonna have some extra pull out counter space just so that there is enough room to chop everything and cook everything. Um, our kitchen was definitely too big in the last build, it, it took up too much of the van. And instead of just the usual sink and hob combo, we're also gonna add an oven because that will make for some really delicious food on the road. We love food, it's so important to us. Yeah, also when you're doing your build, you wanna prioritize things that are important to you and make space for those, and then things you don't care about so much, leave them to the side. Then we're potentially gonna put in a little log burner if we go to a colder destination, but I probably won't do that until the date that we are actually gonna go somewhere cold. And then there's a little unit at the back for some more clothes storage next to the bed. Now our list is obviously very rough, but I want you to have a really good think about what you need and what you can do without. Because you should try and limit yourself to just having the essentials if you want your van to be functional. Now obviously all this depends on the size of your van and you, can, you might have all of these features, you might have half of these features, but just keep in mind that if you're doing a small van, you're gonna have to be even more savage on cutting these things out. Don't worry too much, your plan will obviously change along the way. This is definitely more of a guide than like a straight set out plan. I just think doing the list method and then making the drawing is a really good and quick way of getting a, a good visual idea of what your finished van is gonna look like, which is obviously super important when you're building it. And if it's your first build, which it probably is if you're watching this video, you're gonna have to go into it with a bit of, um, with a bit of leniency. Like if you have a deadline, accept the fact that you might not meet that deadline, otherwise it can add loads of pressure to your build and actually end up slowing you down. I remember on my first build, I was working pretty flat out and I had a deadline and I got stuck on the electrics for a bit and I just remember sitting in my van crying uh, underneath some lights that wouldn't turn on. And that definitely could have been avoided if you just sort of go into it knowing that you're not a professional. Don't set your standards too high. Because at the end of the day, it's a really enjoyable process. Like you're building a home for yourself and your partner maybe that you can go traveling in and see amazing places around the world. So like just relish the fact that you actually have the opportunity to do it. If it goes well for you, it will literally change your life. Okay guys, that's all we've got time for for this week's episode. I hope you found it entertaining and I hope you found it slightly useful or neither and you just like watching me be a melon on camera. But anyway, yeah, literally thank you so much for watching. It means the world. Please hit that subscribe button, fondle the old like button and yeah, comment away if there's anything else you want to see me do or, or you're interested in. I will definitely reply away down there. Peace and love homies. Have a good one.